had two different Uber accounts. They didn't mix, blah, blah, blah. You know how hard it is to find a phone number for Uber? Yeah, oh. impossible. It doesn't exist. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the yeah. new thing now. They don't want you to call them. They want you to go through their AI bots. And that's the only option at this point. Wing It Podcast, GooseDigital.com, episode 64. Who do we have? Robin Kroll, Jen Pugsley, and Kyle Landry, and Michael Turksani. Welcome, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having yeah. me, guys. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, exciting, exciting time for us to have you on the podcast. And I guess your, your podcast debut, not only for us, but in the, in the world of podcasting. Yep. Um, this is a kind of a joke that I use a lot, so probably shouldn't say it, but we, we have like lots of visitors mm -hmm. or lots of views, like hundred thousand a month kind of thing. So watch what you say, cause it'll get out there. Sounds good. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, well, what, you, yeah. So we're here to talk about, uh, you know, all things digital, all things, all risks. Um, why don't we start a little bit with who you are. Yeah. Tell, tell us, tell us what you, tell us the business. Yeah. Windsor, Ontario native, uh, director of marketing at All Risk Insurance. Uh, I've been in the insurance game for about five years now. Um, fortunately, I am the product of two insurance brokers. So entered this game quite strongly. Um, it's, it's been a fun five years learning the industry. Uh, I finished my master's while working as a broker. Um, I'm working on cave designations, working on my level two Rebo. So nice. I am all in on this insurance game. And I think the best part has been since January 2019, when I took the marketing side over um, for the brokerage. Uh, mm -hmm. Is getting to actually learn that side of it, getting to use my education in that regard. And then eventually meeting you guys about a, about a year ago, actually. That's right. Thank yeah. You. A little over Thank a year. You. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we had a great time in, in, uh, in Windsor and had I known we probably would have spent a little more time there, but we got a nice, nice uh, tour of your beautiful office there. And yeah. Thank you. With yeah. The team and pre pre COVID. Yeah. Yeah. Pre COVID right? post pandemic. We'll have you guys all back. Yeah. Lunch or yeah. dinner. Me yeah. too. Right. Oh yeah. Well, what I think is so interesting okay. about kind of your, entrance into um you know into this industry with your with your um your parents and and with the business is that i think a lot of brokers have so i know we're not going to talk about recruiting and talent a ton but maybe we just can go here a little bit is that i think you know we've all heard about the challenge of of um recruiting the next generation right mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and not only that but i think in, it's interesting from like a digital marketing perspective because you've got that owner lens and you're thinking, well, wait a sec, this is more than just my job as the digital marketing lead or the marketing lead in, in the company. I've got a stake, so to speak, in this thing's success. Yeah. But I'm also of that next generation in terms of how would you like to be dealt with from a customer point of view, right? Definitely. And I think it's interesting and it's that line is drastically blurring between I mean, it's a running joke, right? I'm, obviously, I'm a stereotypical millennial. I fit right in the middle of that demographic. But the way that um, media, I guess, portrays the ideal millennial working situation, whether it's, you know, we'd rather rent, we'd rather um, borrow instead of actually owning anything, it, the same thing goes for this. You know, there's this idea that the new type of business is only going to be online. It's only going to be convenient. And I don't think that's true. I, I, I don't think that that's truly the way it's going to go. And the, the traditional way, the, the way that, you know, it's always been done, I think will come back. Yeah. I think so too. And we're already seeing that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I think what, what with some of these services that haven't transformed, like I've got this, um, cash management digital well it's actually cib now cibc digital business and i'll probably mm -hmm. talk about that on the podcast in case they're listening <laughs> it's a, not a bad tool like if you log if you can actually get into it it's okay like you can get your check images and whatever as a business owner but getting set up on on it is a disaster 
And it's like, in like, as I'm, I'm reasonably technical, you, you know, that I'm reasonably technical, you would be, you know, yeah. any of us could like know how to like use an iPhone mm -hmm. and you can't access the system and you can't call people. If you call yeah. somebody, it's like, you're going to be on the hold. And, and if you get someone on the phone, they're not going to have a clue of what's going on. And your seven day token expired yesterday and yeah. you're going to have to get another one and you won't get one for nine more days. Like, I think part of the traditional experience that you're referring to is was got so bad. Yeah. Yes. That we're all just like, it's gotta be hundred percent digital and it's got hundred percent be everything online. Right. And then, yeah. but really if it was like, if I could get a hold of somebody and they were like, Oh, no problem, Michael. Oh, I see what's going on here. Oh yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Check your email. Oh, yeah. boom. Okay. But did it, I'm online. Right. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I find it funny too, because I had an issue recently. I didn't realize I had two different Uber accounts, right? Side story, but I had two different Uber accounts. They didn't mix blah, blah, blah. You know how hard it is to find a phone number for Uber? Yeah. Oh. Impossible. It doesn't exist. Impossible. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, that's the yeah. new thing now. They don't want you to call them. They want you to go through their AI bots. And that's the only option at this point for a lot of these businesses. Yeah. 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 So like adding a little bit of that, you know, when I think part of the challenge for the traditional service teams that they want to do a good job. Like, I'm sure it's not nice for somebody that works in that role. I'm now having to make that call or you're having to make that call, let's say, and yeah. they don't have the tools on the back end or the visibility or anything like that. So it's kind of, it sucks for them. Cause they're like, yeah, I know, you know, Michael, it's like, this is just what it's going to have to be. So you're, well, you know, maybe in seven days, check your email, but if they had tools, they would they would be happier in their role too. They'd be like, oh, I see what's going on. Let me merge those two Uber yes. accounts yeah. for you. Boom, right? And, and keeping what they see, what your staff sees, identical to what your customer sees, yes. I think is so key too. If if you bog down your staff with this overcomplicated system that's not user-friendly, they can't do their job effectively. And unfortunately, I feel like that's where a lot of tech is at this point. Yeah, like, get, like what do you, if you... Maybe we could, since we're on this kind of run, not to deviate too much from where we're going, but do you have like a sense of what, like some of the hardest customer service challenges maybe that, you know, brokers maybe are, are, are facing in that regard? Like how, um, okay. Yeah. Um, I think... I, I, I think we're stuck in that middle, that murky middle, right? Where we want to find, and, I, and I'll speak to my brokerage. I, I think we want to find that balance where you've got, let's say an older demographic or those like myself who kind of refuse the solely online portion. And then you've got those who only want convenience, who they only buy insurance because it's a necessity. They don't do it because they see a value in it. And so we're here in this middle trying to find, okay, how do we, how do we, not jump on the bandwagons, but how do we participate in the societal, the, the business societal norms of, you know, okay, we'll take on this tech, we'll take this tech. Uh, I don't not necessarily agree with that one, but, you know, maybe we'll adopt part of it kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. okay, so how do we find that balance without upsetting the older demographics or those who don't want it, but also mm -hmm. to attract those who do want it? And yes. it's, it's like, it's really difficult. And without creating like an entire individual plan for each client, you know, I, I could spend all day doing that. Well, it's interesting to be, you say the, the murky middle. So you're right. It, it, it probably is the most difficult place to be. You're actually in the best place to be because, you know, Michael, you talked about that, the traditional uh, broker who don't have, where they don't have the tools and it's too challenging. They're not even looking to add the tools. And then the other um, complete opposite side, which is that purely online world where there's a perception that that is the best place to be. So this murky middle where you can actually kind of pick and choose and looking at it because the reality is technology, uh, you know, choosing the right technology can actually address these challenges for all the different demographics. It's a matter of sort of understanding what the challenges are and then positioning them. Mm -hmm. So it's the toughest place to be, but I think you're in the best place to actually see that success. And the fact that you do have that mixed demographics who are very involved from the leadership side on your end, you are looking at that. You are looking at what is, you know, what do the millennials want? The mix of the technology, but having that, you know, that single that single customer view and that uh, ability to, to to pick up a phone when it, when when that's needed. Yeah, and and I think it's it's kind of like we want clients to call us. 
we want to work on that relationship. It's yeah. it's the only, I know Jenna was telling you, but I think it's the best asset any broker could ever have is the relationship with their client. Mm-hmm. So you need to call us. We want those touch points. But I also understand that I need to provide convenience where it's applicable and where it works. I'm not going to force it if it's not going to get used or if it's, I guess, redundant or if it's just overly complicated. Yeah. And it's not adding any value to the customer or to the, or to the CSR producer. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I do think the industry, you know, at the, at the service level, they, they kind of assume that, you know, it, there is a bit of trial and error. And you and I were talking about that yesterday. It's like, okay, well, we know that this birthday communication w- <laughs> will be successful across 85% of the base. So there is going to be that 15% who's going to be like, why are you sending me a birthday communication? Yep. But the good news is, is that 85% was like, oh, thank you. This, the, it's memorable definitely for them. Right. Yep. So it's very wild balance. <laughs> and, and I would say too, this is again, like another anecdote, but the, as a marketing manager, you know, um, I think having a lot of those replies come through our, you know, our general communications type email and, and I forward them off or you know, it's automated to it in, to an extent, but I really appreciate the fact that I see a lot of the responses because I, then I truly understand how it's functioning, right? I can see the numbers. I can see the stats. You guys are great with providing me with feedback on how it's operating, how it's running, which is great by the way, but getting to actually see the direct mm-hmm. client feedback is amazing. Getting to see a client say to their broker, Hey, you know, this pandemic sucks. I can't wait to catch up over beers again. Like those, it's those kind of things like that makes it worthwhile. Yes. Yes. I, yeah. I do. I see that on the B2B side too, from the, from the carrier to broker level and all of these emails go into the broker inbox. And, and, and so you can see that they're replying to them and they have a positive, you know, Mm-hmm. Yeah. impact on, and, on even, and even when you have you see negative comments that come through so it's it's that if you're building that relationship which Kyle you said you, you, you know I think you said just a, a few minutes ago is you know building that relationship with your clients and you know if you build it through digital mediums if you build it build it through through direct connection um, it's finding all the different tools because it's that relationship that gives you that advantage that that's that is why a client is going to stay with all risks as opposed to going to uh you know a, a, another brokers because there is some kind of a connection yeah um, that's unique yeah and it also the flip too understanding why they're leaving that's also just as important yeah 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 i mean when i think of like there's so many areas that you know i think what's happened with almost the digital marketing has been dragged into the customer experience. And and we've seen this, you know, in other industries as well, that they, that the marketing team is sort of responsible for more of the sales cycle. You know, the, the sales teams, they don't even really want to engage a lead until it's really far along. Right. You know, yeah. Yeah. And we're doing a lot more to like empower people to do better research online. So by the time it makes it to us, they're more educated, et cetera. And then once they become a customer, we're now as marketers weighing in on, well, wait a second, we don't want just random emails going out here, right? Yeah. We don't want you to just, you know, the sales team wants to do something. Well, wait a second, well, how are you using the logo? And so now we're like way more down to so the customer experience. And then we get dragged into like, like you were saying tools and tech Oh, where you were going to say something. Yeah. Oh no, it's okay. I was, uh, you went from like, uh, let's say the traditional side, right? Brokers did their job. They had their sales. They had their their uh, steps and how they contacted people, their their processes, which is great. And then marketing came in and marketing said, okay, cool. This is how we want you to do it. Or statistics tell us this is how you should do it. Or companies tell us, Aviva literally did a whole presentation on how you should contact your clients, right? Like, that's great. And that's really cool. So, but now you've got okay, well, the producer saying, I have my processes. I've done this for years, especially the older ones, decades even. I know what I'm doing. Stop meddling it with my clients. And I'm saying, okay, but you could improve here and here, but they don't want to because they they know what works for them. So now you're at this competing, right? And Mm -hmm. which one's going to give? And technically marketing trumps the individual producer because, hey, I'm your boss in a way. Um, So it's one of those like, okay, cool. So now we're competing with each other, but it's almost got to be that work together 
And, mm -hmm. and I think the one thing that I really loved about going slow and taking on a lot of these things, you know, one at a time, let's integrate this, look, look at how it works. And then, okay, now we'll bring this one in. Doing it that way really allows me to have those conversations with them as we introduce each one to explain, okay, this is why we're doing it this way. You know, give me those tweaks, give me your feedback, because I'm going to come back to you guys and I'm going to say, okay, we should tweak it here and here because this is what I found. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. it Sorry, sorry. I mean, it's kind of like okay. I just wanted to touch on the uh, Aviva, um, you know, call call ladder method. The, you know, we can bring, like we do, use cases and you know, automated programs and and, and, and ideas that we've used in the past. But to your point, it's like you're tweaking them, right? So you're mm -hmm. saying, well, we like that, but maybe for us, or just maybe generally this should be better because it makes more sense and we didn't even think about it or nobody's really thought about it but you're critically looking at the feedback from everywhere and I think that's kind of interesting maybe just to expand on that a bit like for a number of years the markets you know would come and say this is what you should do and this is the technology and this is what you know how to do it and I think to be fair a lot of the brokers they needed way more of that do it this way. I'm just going to do it that way. Cause I don't have to think about it. Right. Yeah. And that was Y2K. Probably, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That was probably okay for that period of time. But now it's like, I love what you're doing in the sense that like, you're going through and saying, well, wait a minute, like we do want to do a birthday email or we do want to do a quote follow up or whatever it happens to be, but it's not to everybody. It's only to this. And, and when we do do it, it's got to be done this way. Cause I, we did it for three months and we heard that feedback. We're not throwing it out. And part of that's the long-term thinking that I think you're bringing to the table, which is a lot different from others that might just be in the role, you know? Yeah. yeah. A, a lot of it is fear-mongering. If you don't do this and you're going to fail, uh, you, you need, you know, I, I feel like a reading Canadian underwriter, like it's every time there's a new tech that comes up. So you have to have this, otherwise your business is going to fail. You're going to lose all your clients. No, like it's not, you, you've been doing what you've been doing for so long yeah, you can integrate here and here kind of thing, which I mean, integrations are, you know, a whole other problem in themselves, but it's, it's definitely finding that balance and finding what works for you because I can sit here in my little perch and I can come up with, this is the ideal plan by textbook. Sure. sure. Each client's different. You, you have yeah. to know who you're talking to and assess them appropriately. And I can't do that because I'm not on the front lines. Yeah. And I think of some of the, the markets that we, so I was just thinking of what you both have been saying that some of the markets that we have been talking to who have shifted uh, a little bit of the positioning saying, you know, we, we want to support the brokers, mm -hmm. understanding the brokers are the one that really have that relationship with the end consumer. And there are some of these, these markets that really are putting their, their money and their effort uh, out there saying, you know, talking to the broker saying, how can we support you? Not as in, this is what you should be doing, yes. which is definitely yeah. uh, a shift. So they're, they're understanding, okay, there's actually further down, you know, closer to the consumer, they're going to have a better understanding of what actually works with the consumer sure. and then figuring out how they support. And it's the same thing, Kyle, you know, as you're talking to the producers, um, again, it's not saying, you know what, I'm coming in here as you know the head of marketing saying we're going to go ahead and replace everything that you're doing because they are actually even closer to the end consumer. So looking for those little opportunities and saying that's great that you have a process you engage with your customers, but there's always going to be something that maybe we can help oh, yeah. you with. Um, you know, so even if it's you know what there's there's an email you want to get out to. Um, you know, a segment of your existing uh, book. And instead of copying and pasting and sending it out through Outlook, guess what? There's a way to use a marketing automation platform that we can actually send that communication out that it's totally personalized. But instead of you spending hours to do that, we can do it in a fraction of time and it has that end result. So it's, you know, from both levels all the way down, it's finding mm -hmm. those ways to actually improve. Yeah, and, the and, I, and I find it interesting too, um, so like I view my job as for the brand, right? Uh, yes, I work for the organization, but my job is solely to make the brand recognizable. And in doing so, I want to streamline my staffs, our CSRs, our producers. I want to streamline their tasks, right? So if, yes. if I can, if, if I can, stop someone from making a call every time they need a pink slip and they can just download it online themselves. That's easy. That's great. That's awesome. I can do that. 
but ultimately like you know funny enough we were just looking um uh, last week at like re- our numbers because during the pandemic and i feel like partnering with you guys you know of uh, six months or so whatever it was before the pandemic was near near perfect because we internally you know as you're in the middle of the thick of things with the pandemic and the the onslaught of new paperwork with cancellations or uh you know premium relief or whatever it was you sit there and you think oh my god this is so much work you know we're getting bombarded it's coming from all directions what the hell's going on and you're trying to make sense of everything and blah 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 but when we sat down last week and we looked at our 2019 or 2020 and now our 2021 numbers about you know the amount of paperwork coming through and everything it, it actually balanced even though it felt like it was intense and I, I feel like a lot of what we've done as a team you know the, the four of us and and my direct people but i feel like we've really streamlined a lot of these processes and so now it's actually it's that we found that good balance and the training had the appropriate time um and it's worked out really well yeah well, that's, that's, that's amazing. Great. I, I think like it, it's, it allows the service people and the sales to focus on what we just said is the most important thing is service. Mm-hmm. This is the higher level things um, that can't really be done. They can be supported through, yeah. through marketing, but not fully completed through the marketing. So, and I think that there, there's, a, there's a real fear there too. Mm -hmm. in terms of that kind of transition, because it's easy to be busy getting pink cards out Mm -hmm. the door and getting real paper out the door and getting manual emails out the door versus picking up the phone and, you know, having a meeting around upselling liability or. Yeah. Even, even how are you? How's your family being able to give my people the time to do that? instead of, you know, being so inundated with the, the little tiny things all the time, empowering them to do that. But also too, with the email automation specifically, and, and a lot of the landing pages we're working on with different projects, but with the email automation specifically, actually being able to educate people on the renewal process, whether mm-hmm. they're new to us or they've been with us for a long time, even though like it's very minute, the amount of education we're doing, it's teaching them, you know, okay, this is this is kind of like a very simple process. This doesn't have to be a daunting thing. I understand insurance is complicated. I understand insurance is really not well understood by the general public, but being able to, through the email automation to streamline that process for them has been a huge benefit. Yeah, because nobody wants to even and nobody no. wants to shop for their renewal. Like no. they don't. They don't want us. If you're an average person and and or an average family and you you're 45 or whatever and you've got more than just your condo and even then nobody wants to sit there for 45 minutes and plug in seven million questions yeah. into all yeah. of these things to try to get different rates to then find out. Wait a minute. I'm missing something. Have, or, yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. But you do want that comfort of saying, you yes. know what, I know that my broker is doing that for me. That is, that's just a, a, a weight off your shoulder yeah. saying, yeah. I'm, I'm in the best position and that, and that's the broker value, right? Taking care of that an expert. I don't have to be in the weeds of the complicated stuff. Yeah. The, the, the nice thing about email automation is that um, there are a number of big brands that, that do it really, really well. So you can you can look at those industry or those those brands and those industries that are that are using automation, and you can say, oh, okay. So you know if they're doing it, it's probably for a reason. Let's look, let's crack open the hood and and look at what's there. And I I was we talked about this on the last podcast related to um, and our last insurance podcast. But I just I bought, I bought a Ford F one hundred and fifty, so I'll just bring it up again, yeah. right? Might as well. <laughs> He really likes his truck. Yeah, I really, yeah, 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 yeah. I like really. the truck. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's hybrid. It's <laughs> so, so sweet. I'm actually super impressed because you, you know, I would be critical. No, super impressed. But the email automation has been really good. Yeah. And it's not straightforward. I've never been a Ford customer before. I have no clue. Yeah. And or, it's not or a real truck guy. Just, just saying. Yeah. But, you know, there's a lot of little moving parts. So I'm getting these emails and I'm like, wow, okay. So that's how that piece works. You know, Ooh, little reminder, you're going to get something down the road. Like they've, they've done a really good job. I've probably got four or five emails that are just really focused, but they're not too long and they help. Yeah. Like you said, like it helps us understand, even if I'm skimming, because it's, it's like, okay, I know now that when I get to the point where I want to use the app, I can just go back and check it. Right. Yeah. And, and it's crazy too, to getting to that point is, um, 
you you sit there and you see ad after ad after ad all day long. But now that I mean, now that I work in it, you guys have worked in it for a while. But now that I've you know spent the last two and a half three years in this, I, you start to really pay attention to okay, like so what actually are they doing with this, right? I understand. Okay, my intention with this was to click this button here and here, but okay, but now I want to understand it and I want to break it down. Then how do I work that into what I'm doing? And I think that's kind of been the, the best part for me through a lot of this stuff. And, and then having you guys to be like, hey, this is what I saw, you know, can you explain this to me? Or, um, you know, I wanna do something like this. How do we, how, do, how does that even function? How does that work? Um, it's been good. It's been, it's been really great actually. It's awesome. There's a few, well, there's definitely a few, oh, sorry, Jen. Well, I was just thinking about your forward thing and then, and then what we're, we're doing here. And I think, mm -hmm. I think, so obviously this whole thing is just this whole, world has unlocked just a flood of choice right so if you're satisfied and you're kept in the loop and you're educated on what you've purchased mm -hmm. and you think you're, you're paying a fair price even if you're paying an astronomical price for the four yeah. but anyways <laughs> i'm just uh, but what's the likelihood of you buying another ford or and going back to or that referrals same, or, or yeah same just provider exactly. yeah, yeah right just so yeah. it's sort of tight, like right? But yeah, that's where so I think the, I, that's where I was saying before was that, you know, your combination of sort of like your coming into the marketing, coming into the brokerage side of it at, at, at your age range, but then on top of it, the ownership, the ownership thinking, like there are a few broker networks that are in your range and, and, and companies, I think in this market that we would point to, to be like, I think they're doing a really good job. Yeah. Like, and you guys are like, 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 we're really happy to be um, working with you because like, we really believe in you guys. And we think that like, throughout what you're doing, nothing's perfect. I get it. But yeah. like, really think you guys use your heart and your head and everything to, to, to do the right thing and, and, and to look at these programs in a strategic way. And I, I think so many brokers and so many companies generally, like we have this vantage, uh, unique vantage point of seeing the turnover in marketing. So, you know, they come in and whether it's a broker or not, like, oh, they come in, they do all this stuff and in a year and a half, they're gone or two years, they're gone. And yeah. so I, I think there's a lot here. I think when you've got a, a, like someone like you or like a, a CEO or president that's really bent on making sure that the experience is good and we learn about digital and we use digital the right way and we're willing to invest and do it, that also works. Yeah. But some advice to some of the organizations that I see out there that are trying to hire a director of marketing or a manager of marketing and get going, it's, it can be really challenging, right? So, so I think for a lot of organizations, they struggle to get that critical thinking in place where they're patient and they're like, look, we need you to really work with us to figure this out. And then they themselves have to have enough patience to be like, I have to give that person a budget. I have to listen to them. It's a tough balance to strike. And, and doing it for the client, not for the business. Right. Do it do it because it betters the client. It, it, and funny enough, because I'm doing my Rebo management example, blah, 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 everything is always for the client. At the end of the day, if you do what you're doing for the betterment of the client legally, then you're good. And, and I feel mm -hmm. like as a brokerage, we've never been the quota type. You know, even in conversation mm -hmm. with you guys, you know, I've, I've told you guys, relax on the numbers because I don't care that much. I'm here. Is it making the customer's life better? Great. That's all I care about. And so when you, at the end of the day, at the end of the five years, the 10 years, did we better our clients? Yes. I'm happy. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Long, yeah. the long-term business view, right? So I think yeah. that's what you're saying also, Michael. So it's a longer term business view versus this is the tactic, the one-off. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I love how you you pick the right things and you're very transparent, even with us on that, you pick the right things that make sense for the, for the client. You're mm -hmm. not obsessing over, does this integrate? I mean, yes, we all know it's or a huge pain the next point, but you're not allowing it yeah. to stop you. You're not no. allowing it to, you know, put the brakes on. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's a really good place to, to chop it off unless we've got more we want to talk about well we always have more to talk about we can do another one just have <laughs> yeah. just have me back that's all i ask yeah oh, oh we will sure. absolutely, absolutely have you back um this has been really really awesome thank you we appreciate the comments that you made about the work we've been doing together you know we're yes. so so happy about the work we're doing together too. oh yeah um if we're ever not doing a good job you know just call jen yeah. Right, right. You know, Don't call anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me. 
<laughs> yeah. and I'll take you for beers. And they'll sounds, okay. good. No, <laughs> sounds good. Sounds <laughs> good. No, just kidding. No, it's all but, good. Uh, He's uh, not we're, kidding. We're, yeah, we're, we're, I can't wait to get together yeah. again. And uh, yeah, thanks, Kyle. Yeah, of yeah, course. Thank you I'll, so uh, thanks, Kyle. I'll end up in uh, Toronto this November, actually. So maybe I'll reach out around then, too. Yeah, that'd be great. Absolutely. And then I yeah. could come. I'll come out at the same time, and we'll, that'll be fun. Sweet. Awesome. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. Thank you. Well, thanks, thanks Kyle. Bye. Bye. Bye.